Welcome to the first Unity Beginner tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to start a brand new project in Unity 6. And as you can see over here, we have a small character. We're going to be importing this character into Unity. We're also going to add a movement script. And later, in later tutorials, we're going to add an aiming script. As you can see, the egg follows the mouse. If you put the mouse closer, it's also aiming closer to the character. And if you put it further, it's also aiming forward from the character. In the future tutorials, we're also going to create a shooting script. And then we're also going to add a zombie to the game. As you can see, this is the zombie. It has multiple animations. This is the island animation. If we shoot it, it's gonna start attacking us. As you can see, this is the running animation of it, and it's always following the player. When the zombie comes too close to the player, it starts attacking it, and we can also shoot it. If you shoot it, as you can see, it twitches a little bit. This is the hitting animation, and then also if we shoot it one more time, because the health of the zombie is three, uh, it's gonna die. So this is the death animation of the zombie. So if that's something you're interested in, please subscribe to the channel, and we're gonna be adding more things later. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a brand new project. We're gonna go under new project. I'm using Unity 6. Please update to Unity 6 because there has been some changes. So let's name the project. I'm just gonna name the project Aggie like this. And as you can see over here, we have a universal 3D. Now select this and create the project. All right, so this is a brand new Unity project. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna visit the Patreon site. You can go to the link in the description. If you scroll down, as you can see, this is totally free. You don't even have to log in to get it. So just click over here and download the zip folder. Please, if you can support the channel, you can also support the channel by joining the VIP membership. After you download the tutorial assets zip folder, unzip it. And now you got a tutorial assets folder. Drag and drop this folder into the Unity project. So if you go over here, as you can see, the project is open and I just drag and drop the folder from the desktop to the Unity project. Now we have some files over here. First of all, what we're gonna do is go under the main camera over here and we're gonna delete it. Now we're gonna go under the egg player and under prefab, we're gonna drag and drop the egg over here. All right, so now we have the egg player over here and we are also gonna import the arena. So just open the arena folder and go under prefabs and drag and drop the arena over here. First of all, in the hierarchy window, we're gonna select the egg and also over here, we're gonna go under the scene view so we can actually change the things around over here. In the scene view, you can move around by clicking the wheel button. You can zoom in by scrolling and also you can look around by using the right mouse button. So let's select the egg first and we're going to add a new component. So click over here and type rigid body. As you can see over here, we have two options. Rigid body 2D is used for 2D games, but over here, as you can see, this is a 3D game. So we're going to use the rigid body. A rigid body is used for the gravity and also you can move around to the character. So we're going to be linking this rigid body to a script and we're actually going to create a script so we can actually move the character. Right now, if you start the game, if you go under the game window and press play, only the gravity is going to work. So if you press play, the character is going to fall through the ground. So to fix this, we're going to go over here and add another component. And over here, we're going to type capsule. And over here, as you can see, again, we have two options, capsule 2D or capsule collider. Just click on the capsule collider and now we'll go under the scene view and we're going to scroll in to the character like this and we're going to go under over here so we're going to edit the collider and as you can see the, the collider is very small over here so by clicking on the wheel we're going to move and zoom in a little bit so by using the wheel we're going to zoom in and move in a little bit and as you can see we have some dots over here and we're going to adjust the collider to the character so we're just going to move this up a little bit like this and we're going to adjust the height uh, also at the bottom so just move this so it's the same as the wheels. And also we have to resize on the sides. So we're gonna drag and drop this over here and also drag and drop this over here. All right, so now if you press play, the character is gonna fall down and as you can see, it doesn't fall through the map because the collider is colliding with the collider that's on the arena. As you can see over here, it's a box collider and the egg has now a capsule collider. So this prevents the objects to pass through each other. So now we're gonna stop the game and also we're gonna go under the egg and we're gonna add a new script. So this script is going to be used to control the player. So we're going to type player control. And over here, we're going to select a new script and we're going to click create and add. All right, so we created a new script. Now we can actually open the script. So now double click over here. Now, first of all, as you can see by default, we already have a start function that's created by default and also an update function. A start function is only run once when you start up the game. The update function is always going to be looping. So it's called once per frame, as you can see over here. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go above over here and we're going to link the rigid part to the script. To link the rigid body to the script, we're going to go over here and type public rigid body and we're going to name it. So we're going to name it RB. So this is the name. And if we want to use the rigid body in the script, we're going to type RB and save this. Go to Unity and click egg over here and scroll down. As you can see, we have RB over here and it says we're looking for a rigid body and it says none over here. That's because the rigid body is not yet linked. To link it, just drag and drop the egg to the script. And now, as you can see, the rigid body has been linked. This is the rigid body that's linked to the script now. Now let's go back to the code editor. 
and first of all we're also going to add a public int and we're going to name it speed and we're going to set it to one by default so by changing the speed we're going to be able to change the speed of the character so now if you go back to the unity and scroll down as you can see we have speed over here we're going to change it to eight so this is going to be the speed of our character and you can change this if you want later so now let's go back to the code and we're going to type our script to actually move the character so we're going to go into the update function that's run once per frame so this is going to be looping all the time so every frame it's going to be checking if the double key is pressed down so to do this we're going to type if so this is a conditional statement if the condition inside of these brackets is true then it's going to run the code inside of these brackets that we just added so the code inside of these brackets is going to be run if this condition inside of these brackets is true so here we're going to check if the double key is pressed down so we're going to type input dot get key and we have to use these brackets now and tell it which key so we're going to type key code dot w so if the double key is pressed down then it's going to run the code inside of these brackets and every frame is going to be checking if the double key is pressed down all right, so now let's go over here and over here we're going to create a script to actually move the character forward so to do this we're going to type rb dot linear velocity so over here as you can see we're using linear velocity so this is a new change that has been added to unity 6 in previous versions of unity it has been named rb dot velocity but now they renamed it to rb dot linear velocity so we're using rb dot linear velocity equals and if you hover over this as you can see it needs a vector free a vector free just means that if you go back to unity for example for the position of the transform as you can see this is a position this is a vector free this means that it has x-axis y-axis and z-axis so we need three numbers so so to set three numbers we're going to create a new vector free so we're going to type a new vector free and over here we have to type x-axis z-axis and y-axis so first of all we have to type uh, the x-axis so we're going to type speed and we have to ignore the y-axis. The y-axis are, if you go back to unity, and if you move the character, you can actually see which axis are which. So if we move the x-axis, as you can see, they're left and right. If you move the y-axis, they're up and down. So we're gonna be ignoring y-axis. So the gravity will actually work. And if you look at the z-axis, they're forward and back. Now let's go back to the script. So we're here to move the character forward. We're gonna set this to zero. And over here we're going to be ignoring y-axis because we want the gravity of the characters to still work. So we're going to type rb.linearvelocity dot y. And over here we're going to type speed because we want to change the z-axis to actually move the character forward. Now if we save it and we can actually test this out. Save it, wait for the unity to load and now press play and now press w. As you can see it's working but the character is rotating. So to prevent this from happening we have to go under the rigid body and under constraints. Uh, we're actually going to freeze the x-axis and the z-axis. So you would only freeze x-axis and z-axis if you actually use a human character, but because we're not going to be rotating the character and we're going to use a different type of movement script, we're also going to be freezing the y-axis. So now if we press play and press W, as you can see it's working, but the vehicle is not rotated the right way. So to fix this, we're going to link the vehicle to the script. So we're going to go back to the script and over here we're going to link a game object to the script. So to do this, we're going to type public game object and we're just going to name it car like this okay so this is going to be our car and we're going to change the rotation of the car first of all we have to go back to unity so save this and go back to unity so now scroll down and as you can see over here we have a car and none and and we're looking for a game object so we're going to open this click on the arrow over here and as you can see we have a vehicle one over here we're just going to drag and drop this over here so now it's linked and we're going to be changing the rotation of the vehicle so to check which rotation we have to make we're going to go over here and we're going to rotate the y-axis and we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees uh, let's try minus 90 like this and as you can see okay so this is going to be our rotation if we go back to the character i actually added an attachment at the back the character is actually going to be able to attach the rocket launchers and stuff like that at the back so this is how you can tell this is the back of the character so this is the right rotation as you can see it's over here we can go back to the code over here and now we can actually change the rotation of the car so we can type car.transform.euler angles this is the rotation so if you go back to unity uh, by using the euler angles we can actually change the rotation by using x-axis z-axis and y-axis so let's go back to the code and we're going to type over here equals new vector free as you can see it's a vector free because it has three axes like this and over here we have to check the x-axis so if we press on the vehicle over here 
the x-axis by default are minus 90. So just copy and paste this over here. And over here, we're also going to change it to minus 90 because this is the rotation that we need to for the vehicle to look forward when we move forward. And also we have to add the z-axis, the z-axis are zero. Okay, so let's just add zero over here. And now if you save this and go back to Unity, and if you change this back to zero and press play, and if you press W, as you can see, it's working. But when you stop pressing W, as you can see, the vehicle is still moving. So to fix this, we want the car to immediately stop when we stop pressing the key. So to do this, we're going to go over here and we're going to type else and add these brackets. So if you double click on the else, as you can see, else is linked to the if. So this means that if this is true, it's going to run the code inside of these brackets, but it's going to ignore the code inside of the else statement. But if this is not true, so if the double key is not pressed down anymore, then it's going to run the code inside of the else statement. So we have to freeze the car when we stop pressing the double key. So to do this, we're going to type rb dot linear velocity equals new vector free, and we're going to set the x-axis and the z-axis to zero. So this is going to stop our car. So for the x-axis, we set it to zero. We have to ignore the y-axis because even if the car is not moving, we want the gravity to work. So to ignore the y-axis, we're going to type rb.linearvelocity.y, and we have to set the z-axis to also to zero. Like this, and now save and go back to Unity. Now if you press play, press W, stop pressing it, and it stops immediately. Okay. Okay, so now let's add the code for the rest of the keys. So we're going to go over here. We're just going to copy this and paste it over here. And now, as you can see, these things are linked together. As you can see, they're highlighted. But if we add else in front of it, so else if, then this is all linked together, as you can see. So if this statement is true, then it's going to run the code inside of these brackets, and it's going to ignore the rest. But if this is not true, then it's going to check the else if statement. So if this key is pressed down, so we're going to change the W to S, then if S key is pressed down, then it's going to run this code and it's going to ignore this code and this code. But if both keys are not pressed down, then it's going to run the else statement. So it's going to just stop the car. So to move the character back, we're just going to add a minus in front of the speed like this. Now save it. And we also have to rotate this by 180 degrees. So we're going to change this to minus 270 like this. Now let's save and go back to Unity and press play, press W. And as you can see, it's moving forward, press S. As you can see, it's moving back and the car is also rotating. Okay, now let's uh, add the code for the A key and for the D key. So again, we're just going to copy this and paste it over here and paste another one. And over here, we're going to type A. And over here, we're going to type D like this. And over here, we're going to set the Z axis to zero. But for the X axis, we're going to type speed. Actually, we have to add a minus in front of it because the A key is going to move the character to the left side. Also, we have to go to the D key and change this to zero. And also, we're going to go over here and set this to speed. So the D key is moving the character to the right side. The rotation on the Y axis is going to be zero. But over here, it's going to be 180 degrees. All right, now let's go back to Unity, press play, press D, press A. And as you can see, it's working. All right, so now it's moving to all sides. We also want to add a functionality so we can actually press the W key and the A key at the same time, it's going to move this way. So to do this, we're going to go back to the code. So to do this, first of all, we're just going to copy this thing and we're going to paste it over here like this. And now we're just going to adjust this. We can adjust this by pressing the tab button. It's going to move it this way. Now in front of this, we want to remove the else statement. And over here, we also want to add the else statement like this. Right. So now, as you can see, we added if statements inside of a if statement. So this thing is only going to run if the W key is pressed down. So this means if the W key is pressed down and the A key is pressed down, then it's going to run this code. But if the double key is not pressed down, then it's gonna then it's not gonna run the code inside of these brackets. So if you're only gonna press the A key, then it's gonna run only this code. So first of all, we're just gonna cut this. So just go over here and press cut. And we're gonna paste this in the L statement. Like this. So this is gonna run if the A key or the D key are not pressed down, which means that only the double key is pressed down. So if only the double key is pressed down, then we want to move the character forward. But if also the A key is pressed down, then we want to go over here 
and we're going to add speed over here also like this. And now for the D key, we also want to add speed over here like this. And we're just going to set this to that like this. And over here, we're going to type minus 45 like this, save it. Okay. Press W and A at the same time. And as you can see, it's moving the right way. All right. So now if we press D and W at the same time, as you can see, it's moving also the right way. All right, so this is good. Now we're going to go back to the code and we're also going to add the script. We're just going to copy this and add this at the S key. So just go over here. We're going to paste this over here. And now we have to delete this thing over here like this. And we're going to cut this over here and paste it over here like this. And now we also have to change this over here. So we have to set the speed to minus and also over here to minus because now we're moving back because this is under the S key. Okay, so if S key and A key are pressed down at the same time, then it's going to move that way. But if the D key and the S key are pressed down at the same time, then it's going to move that way. But if only the S key is pressed down, then it's going to run the code inside of the else statement over here, and it's going to move back. And we're just going to set this to plus 138 and also set this to 45 like this and we're going to save it press play okay press s and a and it's rotated the right way and also press s and d and it's also rotated the right way right so now we can actually move the character around normally in the next tutorial we're actually going to create a script to aim with our mouse thank you so much for watching if this helped you please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to support the channel please join the vip membership on the patreon and also thank you so much to all the patreon supporters that support this channel on patreon